you know that we play bar chords for two reasons? Number one is obvious. Bar chords open up the entire fretboard. Bar chords open up all the keys there are. Because the open chords, the, the cowboy chords that you play in the first position here, are very limiting. You only have the five major chords, E, A, D, G, and C. You only have three minor chords, E minor, A minor, and D minor. Although there are 12 major chords, although there are 12 minor chords. And now you see open chords are very limiting and the bar chords open up all the keys, open up the possibility to play all the major and minor keys. But there's a second reason. Bar chords allow you to play rhythms that are impossible to play with open chords. Now, that means they open up an entire new world for your rhythm guitar playing. They open up an entire new world in terms of the genres that you can play by putting in the time in learning these bar chords and learning the rhythms and what makes them unique. There are two distinct things that make these rhythms stand out. This is what I want to practice with you today. This includes the on-off exercise. Now all my students know what this exercise is and I'm happy to share it with you today. Now let's get everyone on the same page. Here's my seven step formula to get a bar chord cleanly out of the guitar. Don't worry, it'll be quick in case you're already good at bar chords and it'll be valuable in case you struggle with bar chords. Step number one, it seems obvious, but I had students who missed that point. Straighten your index, we're on fret five, and make sure that this joint here, the big one, is in front of the guitar neck. Step number two, angle your index finger. So instead of putting it straight on the fretboard, you angle it, you put it on the side of the index finger. Step number three, this joint here, the middle joint, needs to be on the bottom string, visually bottom string, and then make it sound. Step number four, the tip of the index finger needs to be on the top string, again, visually top string. We still want to hear the bottom string, but we also want to hear the top string. Step number five, now we want to hear the bottom two strings, Again, make sure this middle joint here is on those two strings and then make them sound. Next step, we add the top string to that. So we still want to hear these two and the fingertip needs to make sure that the top string rings. Last step, apply an E major shape right next to it. Do you see where this is coming from? This is an E major, just a bit different fingering here, take different fingers than usually and when I move that up the frets, I'll end up having this. So if you, if you don't look at the index finger, it looks like an E major, and then make sure all these strings ring out clearly. I told you about the two things that make these rhythms stand out, that make these rhythms different from the ones that you can play on open chords. Number one is playing staccato, so playing rather short and separated rhythms. And number two is dead notes. Here's how. This is staccato. You hear the sound, you hear the chord, but then quickly after it's cut off. And you do it like that. You apply the pressure to play the chord. And you play the chord, and then quickly after you take off the pressure, off of all the strings, off of all the fingers, so you get silence. That's it. Now, the difference to an open chord is this, if you do it on an E major chord here, and you take off the pressure, you even take away your fingers, you still hear the guitar ringing. Now, you have a problem here. You would actually need to do some extra effort. You would need to put at least one finger across all strings, like the pinky here in that case, or maybe all fingers like that, but it'll never be as sharp as a bar chord playing staccato. And these are dead notes. They're rather percussive and without a distinct pitch. You achieve them by getting the bar chord in position, but then don't press on it, just touch all strings lightly and strong. That's it. Now you can do the same with open chords because of the open strings. It doesn't work like that. You would need at least one finger laid across all strings, preferably all the fingers. And in most cases, it just takes too much time. And this here is the on-off exercise. I told you about it before. It's so simple and yet 
so effective because you practice multiple things that you need when playing bar chords at the same time. And you do it like that. You get your bar chord in position. You don't apply pressure, but you touch all strings lightly and then you strum. These are dead notes, right? Then you apply pressure, you strum the strings again, and then quickly after you take off the pressure to make it staccato. And this back and forth, dead notes, staccato. Seems simple, but try it yourself. It's a great exercise. And then later it can translate in a very cool rhythm as well. And I have more for you. Remember what I played in the beginning? I want to show you how to do that yourself. The tabs for that you can download below. There are also the action steps you need to take in order to play that and my estimation of how difficult it is and how much time it actually takes to learn it. Now when I start on that A7 chord here and I play this rhythm. Nothing else but what we talked about, staccato and dead notes back and forth. Same rhythm on a G7 here. And on a C7. And then a different rhythm on B7, B flat 7, but again, just playing around with staccato and dead notes. These two things that make these rhythms unique. Enjoy and I'll see you in the next lesson.